So what we have right here is just the C stand arm. Well, not the arm, but the neck. We got it to a beaver board down here. Strapped down with some ratchets mm -hmm. and an arm and a Carlini just a brace for any forward motion. What's up, beautiful creators? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I want to talk to you all about a project that I had the opportunity to DP on for Target in Atlanta called My Car is Full, and they just released it on their YouTube channel or a couple of episodes on their YouTube channel. And so I want to get more into the specifics of shooting for a commercial slash docu type project and what that entailed for me specifically with this one so the biggest things that i want to talk to you all when it comes to this project specifically is the process trailer because that was going to be most of the videos the second thing that i want to talk to you all about today will be shooting in target so those are the two main things that i want to talk about and of course i'm going to talk about the gear and why i chose the gear so let's get into it so first, let's talk more about the process trailer. If you don't know what a process trailer is, it is pretty much when a car is on a trailer being towed by a truck. And so if you go and you watch some of your favorite films and you see them in a car, most times they're actually not driving the car. They are inside of a car on a trailer and someone else is driving that whole ordeal and it's to mimic as if they're driving but for safety reasons it's clearly a lot safer for them because you don't want to be driving and still trying to act at the same time so the thing about process trailers is you still have to light for them and you have to make sure that you can have as much control as possible whichever way they decide to go in this car and you want the outdoors to make it feel like they're actually driving so this was really tough for us because we didn't have a lot of time in pre-production to figure this out. Again, I live in LA and we shot in Atlanta and we only had one day to location scout all the locations and we didn't get a chance to see how the process trailer looked beforehand. So pretty much our first day was getting used to this process trailer, one. And then two, I didn't know the path that we were actually going to take for the project. And so the first day was, <laughs> A pre-lit day. So first thing I would say is if you are a DP or if you're shooting something for a client, you wanna ask for a pre-light day. You wanna ask for a day before shoot day where you can go, you can see where you're shooting, you can, and that helps you figure out what you need to do to light it, where you wanna set things up, and that way the day of the shoot, you're not trying to figure all that out. Because the day of the shoot, we all know that time goes by extremely fast and we just lose time that we just never really ever had. And so our first day was a little rocky because we didn't have a pre-light day and we didn't know the path and we didn't know where the sun was going to be positioned at that time. Now, when it did come to pre-production, one thing I was able to do was location scout all the locations that we were shooting at, which allowed me to go and use my Catarage app that I talked about in a previous video. I love using this on set and using the Sunseeker app at the locations that we knew that we were shooting at to figure out how to light these locations and then also what the shots were going to look like. From there, I was able to send a PDF directly to the director and the director was able to send that to the client and they were able to approve of the shots, but I was also able to send that to my crew of these are the shots that I'm looking to do for the locations so that the day of when we were at the locations, they didn't have to ask me all these questions of, what we were shooting, how we were shooting, what it looked like. So in pre-production, you wanna to try to give as much information as possible on how you want things to go so the day of, it's more of a seamless transition. And the last thing that I was able to do for pre-production was talk to my gaffer as much as possible about how I wanted the lighting to be, whether it was for the process trailer or for the locations of where we were shooting. So with that, I was able to send him a diagram of how I wanted the process trailer to look. So with the process trailer, we end up lighting it with two 1200Ds. I think we had a 1200D on the driver's side or a 600D on the driver's side, but we have two 1200Ds and we were shooting those through half grids. That was to mimic our sun. We wanted to make sure that we had more control over the lighting than the sun had over us. And all three of the days that we shot on the process trailer, the sun was up and out. <laughs> so we end up putting an eight by solid over the car to make sure that we can block out as much sun and lens flares as possible but there's always time where the sun's gonna do what they want to do and it moves how it wants to move 
And so we did catch some Lynn's flair every now and then, but to me personally, I felt like that added character, as long as it didn't stay the whole entire time they were in the car. But every now and then, adding, seeing some Lynn's flair, it's natural. And when you're driving, you're, it's always different when you're driving. So it actually helped make this like more natural look in the car, which was really cool because that's the overall goal. You don't want it to feel like you have all this control lighting, you want it to feel like natural sunlight. We end up having to put floppies on size because of how the sun was trying to peek through. If I was to do it again, I would bring 12 by solids to put on top. And then also I would make ask for a budget to just make sure we can have some kind of stabilizing heads, whether it's a Cinema 4D for, um, for the process trailer or the Ronin head, whatever that looks like, just being able to get that would have like really put it on top. But those in those times I've learned that as a DP, I have to find some kind of way to slow it all down to make sure that we get what we need and then it looks good and we feel good about it. So Target was another important aspect for them because it is a Target commercial or a Target documentary. And so a lot of the talking, not only was at the process trailer, but also in the Target store. And that's where we were gonna be showing important products as well for Target or that that's sold in Target. And so we wanted to make sure that that was going to be lit properly as well. However, we didn't have Target to ourselves. So we had to use all the lighting from Target, which is always overhead. When you go into the Target store, the lighting is always overhead and we didn't have as much control as I would have liked if we were able to shut down Target and light it how we wanted to. People were still shopping in Target and it was literally open, open. And so <laughs> at first we didn't have time to use any lighting. It was really fast paced. We shot all of the talent the same day, but my gaffer. Welcome to Target. <laughs> my gaffer. A gaffer is a DP's best friend. You find the right gaffer and stay with them for life. My gaffer came through and created this, MacGyvered this whole situation, which was super dope. And I'm so glad because it really helped add feel to their faces. Again, when you're shooting in Target or any kind of store, most times it's overhead. And so you have to add some feel so they're, they're not having raccoon eyes, right? Where it's like coming from the top and the shadows are kind of like falling. So what we have right here is just the C-stand arm. Well, not the arm, but the neck. We got it to a beaver board down here. Strap down with some ratchets mm -hmm. and an arm and a Carlini just to brace for any forward motion. Then my man Beans Mastermind, the double arm to hold the tension of the weight. This is kind of light, but this helps out stabilize. And we got a mobile light to make all our people look pretty. Some of my mother. You know what I'm saying? And also, if you come up here this way, yeah. we, have, uh, we have gaffer vision. We need a battery. Camera team needs to provide a battery for us, but um, I get to see what we're doing as far as lighting this whole process. Shout out to Aperture, you know, for- Make sure you charge the grid. So for the lighting, he decided to use an Aperture 60D and he used the Lantern 90 to add feel to the subject's face as we were walking and maneuvering through Target. And when I tell y'all, even though it might feel subtle or it might not look like it was enough, it was enough. And as you can see, it looks so good. It, it looks so soft. They don't look like they got raccoon eyes. Everything just looks so smooth and so great. And I'm so glad that he did that. It's one of those things where you're going through so much, you're talking to clients, you're talking to directors. So you wanna have your gaffer to be able to go and do their thing and, and support you in any way possible without you always having to ask. And that was truly Alvin. For every location we shot at, everything he did, once he saw how it was and we had the chance to do it again, he was always making fixes, always making corrections. And I applaud him for that because I could not have done this without him. So Target was a bigger part and I loved how it came out. It looks beautiful, it looks great, it looks soft, it looks creamy on their skin. It's just, it's dope. So the overhead we decided to shoot with 4400 white balance because we had to match all of the overhead lighting. The same with the 60D. Um, we end up, you know, matching all of the colors to make, to have consistency. But overall, I was just super excited for the Target and the process trailer. And I was super excited to see how it actually came out because the day of production, you're not really thinking about all that. You're just trying to make sure that everything is accounted for. 
Before we get into the equipment, I do want to highlight Sony because this video is actually in partnership with the Sony C Media Cloud. Now I wanna to talk to you guys about what this is because if you don't know, I am a filmmaker, DP, photographer, but 50% of my work comes from editing. And with that, I like to have a streamlined workflow, a professional workflow, and I wanna be able to have more control over how I receive, how I conduct that experience with clients. And I think the Sony C Media Cloud does that for me. And not just that, I think it's cool to be able to have this kind of app that motion picture companies use. For instance, when I was uh, shooting behind the scenes for The Women King, it was for Sony Pictures and they use the Sony C Media Cloud so that I can download footage that they needed. And when they asked me to edit some promotional videos, I was able to upload it to them as well. And so there's to just know that like these motion picture companies are using something that you're using for your business. That is the goal to always just have a system in place, a streamlined system for you, for your clients and for everyone. So with that, there are a couple of things that I really love about this particular and the reason why I say app is because one, I love that you can access this anywhere, anytime, on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, it does not matter. Wherever you need your footage or whatever you need to do, you can access it wherever you are. And so the three things that I really love about this is one, the file request. I think it's super dope that you have more control over how you request files from your clients to make sure that it is within your workflow and not anyone else's. And also sometimes you're downloading from all these different places and then you gotta unzip the file and then now it's on your computer. Well, all of this is literally on the cloud. So you can do a file request and request it how you see fit. But I also like that you can securely create a media box. And what that is, is pretty much how you're sending footage to someone else or how you're sending your files to someone else or that folder to someone else, which again, you have more control over. Creating a watermark, adding a time frame of how long they have to even have access to these files, um, creating a password or making it private, however you see fit, like I think it's super dope. And they do use Aspera Connect, I think I said it right. And so it is a faster upload. You can upload a full folder instead of having to upload files. You can do a full folder upload and then create this media box to send to them. Um, and so I think having all that metadata and like that organization is like super necessary. And the last and most important thing that I really like about this is that you pretty much can edit on the cloud in this. <laughs> and so let's say you have a 30 minute or a 10 minute video and you sent it to your client, they they already created reviews because you can create reviews, you can add notes, you can do all of those and it's integrated within Premiere and your clients can do all of that and you can go into Premiere and make the necessary fixes and all of that in a streamlined flow. And so after they've done all that, they may come and say, hey, I wanna use these 15 seconds right here, just this little part within this 10 minute video. Could you pull that out and make a nine by 16? Well, you don't have to go into Premiere and export and do that all again. Within this 10 minute video, you can just put it in and out and then literally export that particular part, make it a nine by 16, and now you have a social clip. And you did that all within C Media Cloud. So I think that's super dope because a lot of times I do that, especially for YouTube, if I'm working with the brand and they're like, hey, can you pull 15 seconds to use as you know, a teaser. Well, I can do that and not have to go and add a whole nother, you know, workflow of editing to get something out. I think that's super dope, personally. So shout out to Sony. Thank you guys for partnering with me on this video. Okay, so now let's get into equipment because I know you guys have been waiting on the equipment. So when it came to the equipment, we decided to go with the Sony FX6s mostly as an A and B cam, because one, we didn't really have a big budget, and two, it was between the FX6 and the Komodos. So I opted to get the FX6s because I feel like for the running gun that we were doing, Komodos was not gonna stand a chance. We needed to be fast, we needed to be ready. We needed to have everything within, within the aspect of the body. Built-in ND filters with the FX6 really helped because we used those a lot. And just the overall all-in-one that the FX6 provided was just really great for us. I wanted to do FX9s, but again, we didn't have budget for it, so we got the FX6s. And then we had an FX3 as a crash cam that was pretty much only used when we were shooting the process trailer and we had it um, on a mount on the front of the car to get the two cam. The two FX6s was our A and B cam, always getting talent. So even when we shot in Target, we ditched the FX3 and we only used the FX6s for the A and B cam. One was on a steady cam 
and one was on the Easy Rig. So my thoughts when it comes to Sony FX6, using it for the first time. Okay, I, I like it, I like it. I really do, I like the fact that they're kind of like an all-in-one, you get your built-in indie filters, you know, you I have all of the tools that I usually use on a regular basis when I am DPing that I need and that I love. I, I felt like I wasn't missing anything with the Sony FX6 and it still provided the quality that we needed. And the reason why I decided to choose the FX6 over the rest outside of like it being an all-in-one was the low light capabilities, again, with documentary style content, you don't always have control and you don't know what kind of situations you're gonna be put in on, on lighting, to be honest. And so for me, we wanted to have a camera that was going to be ready for whatever it was. Um, for instance, we shot in a gymnasium and it was so big, we just didn't have enough lighting. We had to use the lighting for that. So, and it was, but it was dark. So being able to use the FX6 that has really great low light capabilities was needed for us. And so the, the Komodo wouldn't have been able to do that. So I like the FX6, I really do. And I wanna play with it a lot more. I wanna see what that looks like when it comes to documentary work. Um, for lenses, we decided to go with the Anjanus for the FX6s because we wanted to have some zooms. Um, it was going to be easier. Again, this is run and gun style situation. So we wanted to have zooms, allow it to be easier for us to go through the motions. But we did have Sigma Primes for the FX3 for the car scenes. And I think it paired nicely with the Anjanus. Uh, the Sigmas are just as clean as the Anjanus and the characters to me are very similar. And so I think you don't see a difference between the quality and the look of it. And so that was the goal is to kind of create this really clean, a nice commercial style slash documentary style shoot. So I think the FX6 and FX3's pair with the Anjanus and Sigmas was great. Also, when it came to diffusion, I decided to go with the soft FX. And the reason why is because I didn't want to have a lot of bloom in my highlights. Now, when you don't have control over your lighting, which most times you don't, and a lot of times people do want to go for like this, that, that look with a lot of bloom in your highlights and I feel like for a commercial look, I didn't want to have that, but I still wanted to have that soft feel overall for the skin tone and you know the overall resolution and overall look of the video. And so the soft FX, I felt like did that for us. And I think I was using like a half, but, and I, I know the first day I also used the black satin half. And the reason why I liked both of those is because they still create this really soft look without all the blooms and highlights. So I feel like there are projects that, you know, yes, use your black promise, use your glimmer glass, use those. But I think there's other projects and you have to know which project to use what, where maybe the blooms might be a little too much. If it's a commercial, maybe, maybe that might be a little too much. Maybe we can just still have this soft look without so much bloom. So my friend actually sent me this triangle that have all of your diffusion filters on it. And it kind of tells you which one has more bloom, which one affects your resolution and your softness, which ones affects your contrast. And it places these filters within the triangle of where they what they do so as you can see the black promise does all of the blooming all of the blooming and then the soft effects is a little closer in between the resolution and the contrast so i felt like okay we can work with this with the fx6s and you see your glimmer glass and your black satin the black satin is kind of in the middle so it gives you the best of all worlds and so you know i kind of like toyed with that a little bit especially since i couldn't go and have a prep or a um, play with things beforehand to really kind of figure out like what vibe I was going for. And I also did a lot of research online to figure out what diffusion will work, you know, for something like this. So I know a lot of people say get this because this is what it looks like, but you really want to be intentional about your diffusion, I feel like. So I wanted to be intentional about this and I wanted it to look commercial even though it was like also like a documentary. So that was the goal when it came to diffusion. I just wanted to be very intentional about how I was um, what diffusion I wanted to actually use. Now again, I learned a lot on this set and I, I was super grateful to actually be on it and learn this because like I said, I only seen this on commercials and bigger films that I've been a part of. So to me, it made me feel like I was actually a part of something big. Shout out to Target um, for just giving me that opportunity and that chance. Um, because it was a lot, but I think I had a great team and I learned a lot. And ultimately that's all it's about. We're all learning in this field. No one's perfect. Every day, even your favorite filmmaker or your favorite cinematographer is still learning daily. And that's what being on set is. It's like, it's such already a stressful environment because, you know, especially as a DP, you got to be over your crew. You got to talk to the director. You're talking to the client. And so you want to make sure that you're working with a team 
that is like fun and takes that stress off of you and it's like, hey, we got your back. And my team had my back. So shout out to y'all. That one was for y'all. I love y'all for that. Like for reals. <laughs> so I just feel like, you know, I think it looks good. I think it came out great. I'm excited to see more of the episodes. Definitely check it out. Let me know your thoughts and how you feel about it, what you think about it. And if you have any questions, leave them down below, like this video, and make sure that you guys are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.